I have a special guest in the studio with me today. Paul Larson is a two-time Emmy award-winning producer at Mountain Lake PBS in Plattsburgh. His segment Spotlight airs on the program Mountain Lake Journal. It features interviews with artists and creative people in the North Country and Quebec. For this week's episode, Paul Larson has interviewed Dr. Francois Clemens, who played the singing officer Clemens on Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood from 1968 to 1993. And... I would be fibbing you, Paul, if I didn't say that I'm envious. Welcome to WNVZ. Thank you so much for having me. It's a real pleasure. And I've, I have seen your work, so when I was told that you were coming in, I was quite excited to actually have you here. So out of, you know, out of the things that you have done, would you say this is one of your most magical interviews that you've done? I love doing any kind of interview that has to do with things that I personally enjoy, and this is definitely in that category. So when you and I were talking before we got started, we talked about Mr. Rogers, and for me, Mr. Rogers was actually being seen on Mountain Lake PBS when I was a little kid because I grew up here, but how about you? Where did you see it first? I saw it on Iowa Public Television because I was growing up in Des Moines, Iowa. Very big fan of the show. Who's your favorite character? Lady Elaine. Uh, in the neighborhood of make-believe. She was selfish, and she was often the antagonist in the stories, but there was something very interesting about her. I liked that there was a complex character who was not evil, but she was just selfish. Yeah, she kind of like a Veruca Salt, almost. Oh, very much. But I think Veruca was a little bit more naughty. (laughs) (laughs) So I have to ask you, how did you enjoy interviewing Dr. Francois Clemens? It, It was, as you said, magical. I grew up watching that show, And he would be in the realistic segments as the singing police officer. He would be in the neighborhood of make-believe, interacting with puppets. He was also in these full-scale operas they would stage that would last for an entire episode. Um, Seeing him again was like seeing an old friend, because I interviewed him once in 2004, and he lives in Middlebury, Vermont. He used to be an artist in residence there, and he was an instructor and choir master there. Now, seeing Francois these days, it just transports me back to a gentler time when I was watching Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. I love the behind-the-scenes stories that he has to share. And what was interesting to me is, as an African-American man, he said that he initially did not want to play a police officer on television. How are you doing, Fred? Good, France. I wanted my friends to see in your uniform. I had a tough time being Officer Clemens because in the ghetto, The policeman is the villain. And I grew up in the ghetto. And when I was a boy, the policemen were not nice in Youngstown, uh, not where I grew up, to to the kids. And a lot of times, uh, they were either beating black boys up with their billy clubs, and unfortunately, occasionally, they shot one here and shoot one there. So I, I stayed away from them. And Fred said, he told me the story that his mother told him that there were helpers. And he said, well, friends, maybe you could change that image you could become a helper. I wanted to do something good. I wanted to change that image. And I said that to him. So he, I said, let's, let's see what I can do to help. So he really, as you could hear in that clip, turned a negative into a positive, turned it into something wonderful. So what do you think made it such an interesting interview? Well, I am someone who adores going to real places where where movies are made or learning how television is made. And I really liked his behind the scenes stories of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. He was a young man in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, dealing with a lot of racial issues. And he said that he knew that Fred Rogers belonged to a health club where he would swim and the health club excluded African Americans. So he brought that to Mr. Rogers' attention and Fred Rogers withdrew his membership. So good for him. They also dealt with racial issues on the show, Um, not in an explicit way by talking about it, but by showing it. Fred Rogers would show how people of different races could get along, could be friends, and could have a good time together. Now, the documentary Won't You Be My Neighbor about Fred Rogers and his legacy also airs this week. And have you seen it yet? Yeah, I was in New York City in June seeing a film festival of 1960s horror movies. (sighs) And I took a break from that to see Won't You Be My Neighbor at the Regal Cinema near Times Square in a beautiful auditorium. I had a real comfortable seat Mm -hmm. that reclined. It was a break from the horror in a few ways. Um, It was a break from the 1960s Frankenstein movies I was seeing, but it was also a reprieve from what's going on in our world today. Watching this movie, first of all, I remembered what it was like to be listening to Mr. Rogers speaking in that very gentle, caring, educational tone. And... 
You know, Fred Rogers is also able to cast his spell on adults. He was a very moving public speaker at commencements, for example. And I just got the sense watching this film that the world needs Mr. Rogers today, and sadly we don't have him. And there's no one else like him. He has not been replaced since he passed away in 2003. He, uh, he was our kindest adult friend when we were kids, and we could always look up to him to know that it was going to be okay because yeah. Mr. Rogers was there. Absolutely, yes. Now, we've kind of touched on this, but what are your memories of watching Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood when you were growing up? One of my favorite memories was watching Margaret Hamilton visit the set of Mr. Rogers. Margaret Hamilton played the witch in The Wizard of Oz. I was at the age where I was just starting to learn about this wonderful movie, The Wizard of Oz, and I think that very year, Margaret Hamilton visited the set, and she showed how it was just a character she was playing. So she would put on the costume and the hat while Fred Rogers and she were explaining it, and then she would go into the neighborhood of make-believe, and... I remember loving that. And I also remember enjoying the operas that they would put on. They would take up the whole half hour, but they were they had quite wonderful messages for children. So when should we look for your interview with Dr. Clemens? Well, it airs on Mountain Lake Journal this Friday at 8 p.m. and again Saturday at 7 p.m. And the movie, Won't You Be My Neighbor? That airs Saturday night at 8 p.m. And I'm excited to see it all over again. And I'll share something with you as we wrap up today. I had a moment about a month ago where I was changing from my winter boots into my slippers outside here, out uh, right in the front area of the Z. And I said to myself, you are having your Mr. Rogers moment right now. Because <laughs> that's kind of what it feels like when I come in and, you know, and do my thing here today. So, Isn't that wonderful how it just brings you right back to that that house and that yep. closet and those sweaters. And it's just, and I, it's that warm feeling on the inside. Mr. Rogers, after all these years, you know, still makes me feel just as good in my heart as he did when I was a kid. He's still with us, isn't mm -hmm. he? Absolutely. And like, like you and I were mentioning, always look for the helpers. Paul, it's been my absolute pleasure, and I look forward to watching this this week. Thank you. Thank you so much.